And our guest, Dr. Barack Abano, has arrived. Let me bring him on. Yes. Dr. Abano, are you there? I'm here, sir. Wonderful. First, uh, thanks a lot for coming to the show and, and joining myself and, and joining Portia and clearing up some some things and answering some questions on a topic that has been discussed a lot. Um, I was just mentioning how just last night CNN was talking about AIDS in black America. And there's a lot of talk about AIDS and HIV, and there's also a lot of conspiracy theories. And one that we're addressing tonight is uh, whether or not AIDS and HIV is a hoax. Now, is before we get started asking you any questions, uh, is there anything that you would like to kind of open up with? Uh, and, and and first, why don't you tell the audience a little about yourself? All right. Uh, I'm Dr. Barak Otieno Abonyo. I was born in Kenya, uh, did uh, my undergraduate and my master's degrees in Kenya. Uh, part of it I did in South Africa. Then I came to United States to do my PhD. I started it at Dartmouth College, finished at East Carolina University. And uh, I went ahead and did my postdoctoral training for three years at uh, St. Jude uh, Children's Hospital, as you may be aware, is where the drug for leukemia was, uh, was discovered. And now I'm here at Florida, at Florida A&M University. Uh, my major area of uh, research is uh, mainly asthma, cancer, and uh, neurodegeneration. Uh, but recently we have uh, discovered or we have found a receptor which has been believed to be a receptor that is used by HIV to get into the cell. Uh, this re receptor is called CCR5. We are the first people to show that its expression is a lot in alveolar epithelial cells. These are the cells that are found in your alveolar. And some investigations have found that people who are treated for HIV, somehow they would find out that the HIV virus disappears in their blood. But when they look at their lungs, they find that the virus hides in the lungs. And uh, our postulation is that uh, it is likely that it is using this receptor to hide in the lungs. So, so now we're how still that investigating that. Yes. Oh, so, so you're still investigating it. And so that, yes. that's really interesting because one of the, the biggest arguments that a lot of so-called AIDS dissenters like to throw up is that the HIV virus is supposedly more dormant than a virus should be in, and, and what would, what would um, you say to that? Uh, what I would say to that is that the dormancy that they're claiming uh, is not very certain because the, the virulence of any virus depends on, uh, on, on, on its mutation uh, to exist in a, a mammalian cell or, a, or an avian cell, what I mean is a bad. Like uh, the recent uh, viruses that are, are, are associated with uh, bad flu. Uh, so uh, when somebody talks of virulence, virulence just depends on uh, how much virus is there and uh, how much is going to affect your genes or your proteins or, or, or things like that. So you cannot just say one virus is virulent and one and one is not violent when you have not investigated these things and found out. I see. So, so it's yeah. quite subjective in terms of, of exactly how dormant a virus would be and how long it would, would take to start um, um, yeah. doing various different things. And uh, in fact, I don't agree with that theory that HIV virus is, is, is dormant and it's not violent. If it was uh, dormant and not violent, then why would people be uh, feeling these uh, effects of HIV? Right, I mean, right. If, if we have several viruses there that we are exposed to that we don't feel their effects. But if, 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 if uh, because they, they, they are not, uh, they, they do not affect our system that much. So if HIV were the same, then we would, we would not feel it. Right. Yes. So um, exactly 
And there's there's a lot of people out there that say that um, the HIV virus and and um, I do want to say to the viewers that this this question has already been addressed countless numbers of times by various different scientific journals that are peer reviewed and and various different um, magazines such as Scientific American and and Nature magazine. But I have to ask again. Um, because a lot of a lot of the the AIDS dissenters say that the HIV virus is harmless, and a lot of them get that from Peter Dusberg's hypothesis, where AIDS the HIV virus doesn't is a harmless virus, and and AIDS deaths are the result of drugs. What do you say to that? Uh, what I would say, HIV virus is not harmless. Uh, first. Uh, people who are having symptoms related to HIV. I think the, the postulation that HIV virus is harmless is based on the fact that the, the, what kills the person is not the HIV itself, but immune deficiency. Right. That is where people uh, come up with that theory. But the thing is, what causes that immune deficiency? How right. does somebody become uh, 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 not able to protect himself? It is because the HIV virus has gone, has invaded the cells. And uh, as you, I don't know whether the viewers or these people who are talking knows how HIV invades the cells and uh, lyses the cells and make them, make them useless. You don't even have enough cells to defend yourself. So in this case, therefore, uh, I would uh, think that uh, HIV is the culprit here. Uh, I would not say that it is harmless just because it is not the one that is killing uh, uh, the person. I would call it harm harmful because it is leading to other invasions. I see. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Portia, do you have anything that, that you would like to, to ask um, and so I can take a break because I can run my mouth all day? Uh, yes, actually. Um, hi, and good evening, by the way. Um, I remember a few years ago when I first got out of grad school, I worked for an HIV-AIDS uh, organization, nonprofit, and one of the things that we did, we did a lot of research on new and upcoming medications, and you had mentioned the CCR5, which was something that I had also looked at. This is when it first started coming out, and they were kind of looking at medications to target CCR5. Would you happen to have any updated information about any CCR5 medications? No, I don't have any CCR, any, 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 any CCR5 medications that is out there. But there are antagonists for CCR5 that have been CCR5, CCR3, and CCR2 that were developed not for HIV, but they were developed for things like uh, asthma, and uh, lung inflammation and other diseases related to the skin inflammation. Now, they have not been tested against AIDS, but I think they would do, they may be helpful because they can stop the HIV from getting into the cells. Because the concentration that uh, uh, inhibition of invasion of HIV, uh, of HIV invading the cells have been concentrating in uh, l limiting its access to CD4 uh, receptors. Uh, but uh, it has not, a lot of people have not really concentrated on CCR5. I know of a group that is trying to do something about CCR5, but uh, there is no conclusive medicine that is even on trials there. I have not, uh, I'm not aware of any. I've, I've tried to look, but I've not seen any. But whether the existing antagonist for CCR5 or CCR3 could be used uh, to help HIV patients, I don't know. And I don't okay. think this has been tried yet. Okay. I wasn't sure. Like I said, I, I did this around 2004, 2005, so I wasn't sure if anything had been developed yet. But I do think that it's, good that it's something that you brought up because these are things that are basically going to be coming out on the front line. These are new developments that are coming up. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. So is it uh, another, one, probably one of the biggest things that I hear uh, people say is that the virus, the HIV virus, has never been isolated. Is this true? 
No, HIV virus has been isolated and the structure, even the structure, the model for the structure already exists. Actually, as I'm speaking to you here, I have the model for the structure. There is uh, the glycoprotein coat, uh, there is uh, uh, lipid biomembrane, there is the, uh, the internal structure which includes the, the protein that encapsulates the RNA. And in fact, even uh, some of these proteins have been used for testing whether you have HIV or not. So anybody who is saying that they have never seen, they, they do not think that uh, somebody has isolated this. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I, agree, I, I agree with you. And also, this is basic biology. I mean, when 